Peace and Black Power family, this is your host Raheem Shabazz and we are here for another episode of Necessary Blackness Podcast and today family, we have a special guest in the building, we have no other than Kajara and Kajara mm. is a Heal Thyself Ambassador of Wellness, she's a medicine woman, a priestess, a spiritual warrior, sacred woman and... She's a community activist, and she is the author of several books. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome her to the Necessary Blackness podcast. How are you, my sister? Peace and black power, my brother. I'm so thankful to be here with you today to share with you and your listeners. All right. I appreciate that. And this interview was an interview that we planned many moons ago. Yes. And... um. The stars aligned, and we said, you know what? We're going to do this this week, and this week we have got it done. So I did mention that you are author. Too many books for me to name, too many <laughs> books for me to remember. Can you give us a list of some of the books that you author? Yes, absolutely. I am the author of Raseki Comedic Reiki Level 1. And level two. Okay. Also, we have an African prayer book called Speaking with Spirit. We have a recipe book with raw and vegan recipes, recipes for elevation. I have a chakra workbook, Revitalize Your Chakras workbook, and a Revitalize Your Chakras journal. We also, I also wrote and published three children's books. I am Mind, Body, and Spirit. I get energy from the sun and light as a feather, the 42 laws of my art for children. Also, we have the Rising Nation, the book of code of ethics for the leaders in the community. And yes, a couple more books. <laughs> okay, and that's this book right here, ladies and gentlemen, a Rise Nation, a Rising Nation. And speaking of code of ethics, a lot of people say, you know, Where's our code at? You know, they talk about being on code. Yes. This is the book, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to get into these books. Um, but before we get into the books, I want you to explain in detail how did you get on your journey to priestess, to become a priestess? Okay. So this is my life journey. This is my purpose. My reason for coming back here to this planet is to bring light to my people. And so my journey started at in childhood. You know, I knew that I was not alone. I would talk to my imaginary friends who are around me. So I was very spiritual as a young person. When I became a teenager, I actually got sick. And my intuition just told me to put my hands where I was hurting and to pray. And I was able to release that pain mm. through that energy work as a teenager. So years later, as I moved on my journey, and I would just say, you know, being on a spiritual journey is always many different things, unexplainable type mm -hmm. spiritual things that happen. So I went through a few things that just continued to push me to seek the truth and to especially seek the truth when it came to religion and spirituality, to find out um, who they prayed to before Jesus, who our mm -hmm. ancestors was talking to. And so that just led me to Queen of Fua and the Heal Thyself book in 93 when it, I don't know if that's when it came out. But that book really set me on a journey of fasting and purification and becoming more enlightened. And so it just naturally led me to different teachers who could teach me and show me the way how to use my magical power. I knew that I had magic, you know, as a young person and I just needed to know how to use it. So basically it was just life experiences that just led me to this work and really, I would say everything that I've learned and done up until I started doing the healing work was a preparation for it. You know, even when I went to college, I got a degree in social science. And mm. so now I consider myself a social scientist okay. because I do work with the people and, you know, just seeing how society has affected us, how oppression and racism still affects us to this day and just how much healing that we need to do as a community 
Yes. So I want to ask you, because you said two things that are profound. Um, we know that you are heal thyself ambassador, and you said you was able to heal yourself. But before that, you said that your second time coming here to earth. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, <clears throat> I would just say I have a, a long memory. And mm -hmm. so even as a child, I had visions and memories of past lifetimes and different places, people, things. Mm. And so, yes, I began, well, it was much later that I realized I was seeing past lifetimes and such, but I'm definitely one who has come back here a few times. You know, I, I was watching a video and I didn't seen like three, four videos and there's always that comment under what, under it and it's like usually young children toddlers sometimes and some of the things that they say some of the things that they do they facial expression and you will have someone that comment she been here before yes <laughs> you know and um that that that's very profound because everything that we think or everything that we do someone already has done it you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just in the recesses of our mind, and then we bring it out. But mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do. This is Necessary Blackness Podcast. For those that are just joining us, we are here with Kajara, and this is her book, A Rising Nation. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Peace. Peace and Black Power family, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, we are here with Kajara, and before we went to a commercial break, we were talking about a lot of things. We were talking about several of your books. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your books, Speaking with Spirit, can you elaborate on that book? Yes. Speaking with Spirit is a book of African prayers and it's prayers starting in ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt, also prayers from West Africa and then prayers from here as well. So this book was inspired by some of my students and clients who had left church mm. and really did not know how to pray other than the prayers they learned at church. The Lord's Prayer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yes. Um, we just felt like it was important to bring forth the old, old prayers because I learned a lot in doing that book, actually, and got to see just how much tradition has carried on. So mm. in ancient Kemet, the way that they said their prayers to honor the great spirit, the four directions and things like that. And it carried over to West Africa, it carried to the Yoruba land, to a Khan land, and even to the uh, indigenous people of this land still mm. pray in a similar way. So it just, you know, it's very very powerful and good to enhance your own spiritual journey. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you something, right? Your name, Kajara. Yes. What is the meaning behind that name? It's such a unique name. Thank you. Yes, it is. And Kajara really means with the spirit and power of Ra. With and the actually, and power of Ra. Okay. it's one of my spiritual uh, occurrences that happened when I was young. I was a model. And my given name is not a name that I could use as a model because, you know, models have cute names. Yeah. So I went into a meditation and just was asking, what is my name? What is my name? And that's the name that came out, Kajara. Oh, OK. And yeah, I was like 14 at the time and I was telling people to call me this and I went by it for a little while, but it was very, very different. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of people kind of made fun of me and I dropped it for yeah. many years and then uh, i would say maybe 20 years later my ancestors was like okay you know your name is kajara you need to use that name oh wow yeah wow so it's a comedic name correct correct all right um you teach about uh comedic reiki am yes. i saying it right you were right reiki right. yeah comedic reiki right I hear that word a lot, Ricky, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not always connected to the comedic teachings. Right. So I'm sure, you know, there's some similarities and then there's not. What is the difference? 
So Comedic Reiki, actually, we work to restore Reiki to its original state because we know all the sciences, the arts, everything really originated in that now Valley River Mm -hmm. Basin area. And so even though other people wanted to claim it, it is a part of our culture and our traditions. And Reiki really is working with the energy of Ra, which is the energy from the sun and our own personal life force energy. So it's the Mm. Ra or the rays and then our key that we consciously bring together to do whatever we need to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, energy is about... um, Everything. Everything has energy. Yes, we absolutely. just don't really think about energy often. And when we are conscious of our own personal energy, then we're able to use it to do great things like to heal ourselves, to move things without touching them. And for us, restoring Reiki back to its original state. So comedic Reiki uses comedic symbols and techniques in the healing process. Our foundation starts with the laws of ma'at. So when it comes to healing right now, we have to heal our minds and reprogram the way that we're thinking and being. And so we start with those laws of ma'at. We work with our ancestors. We work with spirit guides. We work with colors, with sounds, with crystals, just about everything natural because everything natural has energy and frequency and we can use them to help us to heal. So in the other form of Reiki, it's a little bit limited. They don't necessarily go that far when it comes to working with the sounds and the colors and everything. So So y'all go deep. Y'all go all the way out to the cosmos. Exactly. Now you said you deal with colors, right? Yes. I see you got on yellow. I see you got on red. Um, it's a combination. Um, uh, elekes, right? That's what yes. they called the bees. That's right. All right. <laughs> Yellow. What would that symbolize? Is in uh, comedic Reiki. So yellow is a color that we associate with the sun. Mm-hmm. You know, when we look at the sun in the middle of the day, it looks pretty yellow, goldish, right? Mm-hmm. So it has that sun power, and like gold. Is very activating. It's mm-hmm. stimulating. Yellow also works well with the mind. Mm-hmm. So when we have mental instabilities and such, too much stress and pressure, yellow is a color that can help shift our energy and bring more joy. So, ladies and gentlemen, if <laughs> you're going through trials and tribulation in life, put some yellow on, right? That's right. That'll help you out. That's right. That's All right. right. In the red. Well, you know, red is a fire color. The bloodshed, <laughs> the warrior spirit. Exactly. So, of course, I definitely work with red a lot in this work because we are in a spiritual war and we have to keep our energy high, you know, mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. It's so much that tries to bring us down. You know, every time we turn on the TV or the radio, it's bad news. Mm-hmm. So, you know, using the colors to just keep your vibration high can help counteract all of the other things that come at us in a negative way. All right. Um, We are people that have been oppressed and continue to be oppressed, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I remember reading that when you deal with the science of oppression and the science of the mind, right? And you deal with, it's called uh, epic genetics, I Mm -hmm. I might be mispronouncing, but I think I'm correct in saying it. Epic genetics, right? It Mm -hmm. talks about um, trauma and how it's passed down, you know, Mm -hmm. five and seven generations, right? Yes. Um, We're not seven generations outside of um, the most horrific uh, institution of slavery, which we know is to be the mid-passage, right? Right. So the type of healing that you're talking about, we definitely need us as a people, melanated people. What are some of the um, healing modalities or, 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 or things that you do to help our people? 
So what I do is teach classes okay. about comedic Reiki. And we call it Reiki for Black people because it's like the difference between a Catholic church and a Holy Rollers church. Mm. So when we understand that we can use crystals and sleep with crystals or wear them, meditate with them, and that helps to shift that energy, mm -hmm. that trauma, um, listening to music. We all yeah. know how music affects us, oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. The frequencies. The frequencies. And if we listen to binary tones, the frequencies of those tones can shift on a higher level. When we're drumming or playing instruments that are from Africa, things that are native to us, mm -hmm. we respond to it much better because it's it's a part of us. That's you know why what I mean? Soulful people and make the best music. Exactly, exactly. Okay. But when we are chanting negative things, then it has a negative effect on us. And it really continues that uh, energy of that oppression, that racism and all of that. It comes through a lot of the music that we hear on the radio. So we have to kind of turn that around mm -hmm. and give ourselves some more uplifting type beats, frequencies that can really raise our vibration up. So we got to turn it around. That's so right. So we're going to turn it around, right? We're going to take another quick uh, break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about leadership. And I want you to um, expound. We're going to go real deep into misleadership within okay. the melanated black community. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Raheem Shabazz. You are tuned in to Necessary Blackness Podcast. Make sure you share this on social media with all your friends. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back from our quick commercial break. And before we went to break, we was talking about the misleadership that is happening within the black community. Yes, I have seen a lot of misleadership and a lot of men who come into power, whether it's spiritual power or intellectual power, and become so-called leaders, but they will also misuse their power mm. and abuse others, especially women. And so this has been a problem in our community for many, many years. And so I kind of agree with you in that we should all be our own leaders, mm -hmm. um, but we do still have people who serve in leadership positions, um, people who are serving the community as priests or priestess. Some call themselves healers and just have the ability to touch people. Mm -hmm. And so that is a blessing if they are ones who live with integrity. Mm -hmm. But I was asked by an elder to write that Rising Nation book because there are so many who do not live in integrity. And in fact, one of my elders said, you know, we have not been able to build much because the leaders need healing. Mm. They're just not really balanced. We're and at that point where leaders actually need healing. The leaders need healing before they could lead properly. Is there any situations where the elders had to step in and intervene? If you could tell us some situations without, you know, actually stating names. Yes, absolutely. We've had several cases of men. Um, wow. Too many to count, to be honest with you. And it's a shame. It really is. But they are abusing women, violating women in different ways. Mm. Um, some men who are working with the mushrooms and the medicine ceremonies, plant medicine ceremonies, kind of using the mushrooms like a date rape drug oh, wow. type thing. There are some brothers who are in that Tantra community who uh, just need to pull back because they have taken that too far and even violating women um, in the name of being a Tantra healer. Wow. Um, That's crazy. It is. It, it really is. And you know what? People that do that, they always looking for soft targets, right? That's right. And most people have this belief 
that because you're about peace that you won't go to war. Right. So I think that they purposely prey on, on, on community of people that are seeking healing and, and different things like that. Now, you and a group of sisters, y'all have an organization where y'all address certain issues like that. I want you to talk about this organization. Yes, we have set up a council of mothers Mm. And basically, it's women of all ages. We all over 50, though. And so we have been called because the young sisters who are being violated needed someone to talk to, someone to share with, to tell their story, and someone who could do something about it Mm. without us having to go to, you know, the law every time something happens. Oh, no, you don't have to go to the law. Um, What needs to happen, brothers, you know, Mm -hmm. that uh, a said person of that ability you know, we need to step up and we need to have the drop squad. You know, there's, there's, there's a group of brothers that we can handle it. We don't, oh, we don't go to the law. You know, mm-hmm. we make the law. I say, I say. But yeah, I, I commend you for that, you know, um, helping the sisters, you know, um, in situations such as this. Um, what has been like, you know, because justice is a penalty of reward, right? And yes. you said that a council of sisters come together. What has been some of the things that happened to those that were found guilty of this treasonous behavior? So we, our goal is to stop them from hurting other women. So we work to shut them down. And so we give them suggestions. We ask that they make apology videos to put on their social media pages so that people will oh, know. I'm not playing. Oh, no, we're not. We're not <laughs> no. playing at all. <laughs> And you so know I'm gonna go look for the video. Yes, I'm bro. gonna put them on black. <laughs> you, you know, I know the sister probably ain't gonna tell me no names, but if I find your video of you apologizing, oh, you going on black. You going and viral. We appreciate that because people need to know, and there are some who don't agree to the suggestions that we give them, and so we just put them on blast all over social media to let people know because these men are a danger to the community. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, you know, we, like I said, our main goal is to stop them from continuing to hurt people. So that is something that, you know, we do. And definitely we have some brothers who work with us, but we always helpful, always thankful to have more who would take it seriously. Oh, yeah, absolutely. uh, Because, listen, I bang on the beast every day, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, I really don't have the energy or the time, man, to have to deal with our people in that manner. Right. But we got to, you know what I mean? It's a necessity because when you leave that unchecked, and then it it just festers. It does. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. then to our sisters, oh, nah, Mm -hmm. we can't have that. And many of them are repeat offenders, and they will go from one city to the next with the same behavior And not change at all. That's what we've seen, a a pattern with most of them. Yeah, but see, once, you know, um, social media get wind of it. Yes. They they, they ain't going to want to show their face nowhere. That's the goal. You know, especially here in Atlanta, we better not see you at the Juneteenth. Right. You better not come out to the Malcolm X Festival. We better not see you at the Martin Luther King Parade. That's right. Because it ain't going to be about Mm nonviolence. Can I say that? You can say that's your show. <laughs> say what you want to say. Be like, well, I <laughs> well, you know, you know um, you but know. you know, we do need that at times, you know, because like I said, you know, we can be one of peace, and I think that people don't understand, you know, um, in order for me to join peace and understand what peace was, you know, I had to come out of that violent nature. Yes, and um. <clears throat> You know, hearing stories like this, I might have to backslide. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't need to be backslided, but no. y'all gonna leave them sisters alone, man. For yeah. real, for real. So I wanted to talk about other things, right? Um, you do a retreat, you do classes, right? Yes. Tell me about these retreats. So I've been doing retreats since 2010. I've probably done about 50 retreats. Wow. And one thing that I really love to do is to take my people to beautiful healing destinations. Mm -hmm. So we like to go to the beach. We like to go to like places like Sedona that Mm, has a very, yeah, very healing energy out there. We go to Jamaica. We have a trip Mm. planned to go to Kemet. 
this mm, year. Okay. Yeah. So we. You ever uh, been to Savannah? I have. On I did. I wanted to go to Savannah this year, but I I need okay. to get my connections tight. Yeah. To I get went a on space. the retreat there. Okay. Savannah, nice, beautiful place. Yes, yeah. and it's good when we, you know, most of us living in these cities and don't get a chance to get away to somewhere that's really nice and beautiful and just relax. So that in itself is very healing. Yeah, you got to you got to um connect with nature. You got to right. ground yourself. I was just reading this was yesterday I actually um I was reading about the importance of grounding with yourself, right? Mm-hmm. It talks about the uh, inflammation in your body, how that comes out and how the energy from the earth is, is, is vibrant and it revives you. Yes. And um most of us we never experienced that, you know, especially living in the city and surrounded right. by steel and brick and concrete. Yeah. You don't open yourself up, you know what I mean, to the rays of the sun. Right. You know what I mean? Being around greenery. So it's just a whole different atmosphere. Do you have anything coming up? Yes, we going to Sedona at the end of April. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And is this just um, an all women retreat? No, not okay, at all. We okay. always love to have the brothers come. They just right. don't come often enough. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> like the women are, I think, just a little bit more sensitive to knowing that they need healing, and brothers. It takes a little bit longer sometimes. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know, times is changing, though. That's you true. You know, there was a time where um, mental health was taboo. Yes. To say that you was going through a mental health crisis. Now people openly tell you, yeah, um, I got to go. I'm going, where you going? I'm going to see my therapist. That's right. You know, so um, I think people are coming around. Mm-hmm. I just think that um, we need people like us. And mm-hmm. individuals such as yourself that are healers that can give these therapies to our people, you mm-hmm. know, because if we're going to talk about um, healing, you know, and the psychology of a, a group of people that experience a particular oppression, we can't have the oppression <laughs> telling us, you know, how to heal us. That's right. So That's um, right. I, I commend you, sister, for all that you do and for all that you continue to do. And um, this is your first time here. Let, let's don't make it your last. Okay. And um, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you that you want to say before you give people your uh, social media and where to follow you at? I would just say, you know, we are in a divine time right now. And even though society is pushing this fear agenda, mm-hmm. we have to stand in our power. We are powerful beings. And once we stand up in our power, we will be able to do whatever we want to do, no matter what they have planned or what they have going on. So I just always like to remind people of that. You are powerful. In fact, I always say the power is in our hands. Mm. So what we do with our hands determines a lot about what's going to happen in our lives. We fight with our hands. We could fight. (laughs) We could create. Yeah. All kinds of things. Yes. But you know, it's not always about fighting. And I learned that. I had to learn that. Mm. You know, um, we fight in a spiritual war. Yes, right. Um, So we have to be in tune with ourselves and in tune with our nature Mm -hmm. because there's no way that we can lose in this spiritual war. I see. You know, um, so once again, I appreciate you. Let everybody know um, for those that may want to become a part of this spiritual retreat, how they can get in contact with you, your social media handles. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can find us on our websites, RosekiHealing.com, RosekiStore.com is where the books are. Uh, on Instagram, it's Roseki underscore arts underscore temple youtube tiktok facebook is raseki arts temple and yes i now you know you're gonna have to spell that for the uninitiated right? i will all right go ahead. so raseki is r-a-s-e-k-h-i mm-hmm. and then healing for the website raseki healing too. They a- might not know. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all better know how to spell healing. Y'all better know that. <laughs> but spell that one more time. Okay, so Raseki is R A S E K H I. So Raseki Healing is the site for the classes and the retreats. Mm -hmm. Raseki Store is where you can find our books. And I'm actually about to publish a a segment oracle card deck for Mm. those who work with the tarot and the oracle cards. That one is coming out in the next few weeks. I'm so excited. It will be available at Raseki Store and on Amazon. Also, the uh, social media, Mm -hmm. Raseki R A S E K H I underscore arts underscore temple. All right, now, now you said these are uh, tarot cards. Yeah, I'm putting out an oracle deck. It's not. Oracle. It's similar to tarot, but the oracle decks are just just information. It's like a little. And you bit. use it to do reading. That's right. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I might have to get a reading done. Oh, love to give you yeah. a reading i do I, ancestral I, I readings i had so many people ask mm-hmm. me but hey let me do a reading on you let me and i just don't do i never do it mm-hmm. and, I, and i'm gonna be honest with you right the few people that ask me and i'm talking about maybe like four or five people i don't feel like they have the power of to, to you know, to yeah, do a reading to. or for healing, right. you know, and it's just like you gonna read and tell me about myself and your life is all messed up, right. you know. Is it, and I don't know if that's the proper way to think, you know what I mean? Because everybody goes through stuff in their life, yeah. but you are gonna have to be at, at a certain vibration, you know. Like when you walk in the room, your presence need to be felt, right. you know, like. If not, nah, I'm good. I don't need no reading. <laughs> you know, I don't need no reading. You know what Even, I mean? Yeah. I'll read a book. <laughs> but nah, we ain't going to do no reading. But we could sit here and we could talk all day. Um, Once again, you know, I appreciate you. I honor you for coming through and continue to do the work and continue to do what you do and know for sure that we will always support you here. All right. Well, thank you so much. Peace and blessings. Black families. Next week, check us out. We're dropping two episodes.